All right, class, welcome to lesson 81. We are going to do graphical solutions, inconsistent equations, and dependent equations. So we've been doing a lot of graphing lately. We've been graphing using this thing called the slope intercept method of graphing. And you, can, you know that using that, um, we would always put it, in order to graph, we put it in the form y equals mx plus b. So we've been doing a lot of graphing. And we have done things like solving by elimination. Remember elimination, and then we had substitution. That's how we can determine what the solution of two equations are. There's one more method that you can solve a system of two equations, and that's by graphing. So there's three ways you can solve a system of, inequal of equalities, and that's by elimination, substitution, or graphing. Today we're going to do the third one. Now that you know how to graph fairly well, we're going to do it by graphing. So this is what your problems are going to look like. Solve by graphing. And you can see we have two systems, two equations. So they call this a system of linear equations when there's more than one equation. So sometimes they might put a little bracket on there. Where these two lines intersect is the solution to both of these points. There's going to be one point, possibly, that makes both of these true. If there is one point that makes both of these true, that's the solution to the equation. So if you did it by substitution or by elimination or by graphing, you should get the same answer. This problem in particular is in the form y equals mx plus b. So these should be easy to graph. So let's graph these and see where they intersect. So the first one we're going to find, remember I said to find your slope, and that is the number in front of your x. So there's no number, but it's assumed to be 1. And then we find our y-intercept. And that's also, that's this number right, right here, is our B, that's also one. So let's just graph this first line. I'm going to do it in blue so we can graph several lines on the same system, or the same um, coordinate system. So here we go. Remember we do B first before M because B comes first in the alphabet. So I'm going to go over this means, remember this means your Y-intercept. So we're going to go over here, and I'm going to go on the y-axis. This is the y, this is the x. So it's going to intersect the y-axis at 1. So I'm going to put pin on 1. And then we go to m, that's our slope. Remember, we always make our slope a fraction. So we start at this point, and we go up 1. Remember, this is rise over run. So we're going to start at this point, not at 0. You start at your y-intercept. You go up 1 over 1, and we're going to put a point. Once you get two points, that's all you need to determine a line. So I'm going to draw a line to connect those. Hopefully my line will go through it. I do much better on this than I do on the whiteboard, don't I? So we'll just put our little line through there. Look at that. And we should have arrows on the end, but this one doesn't do very good arrows. So that's the one line. Let's do the next line. We do our, our M is going to be the number in front of the X, which is minus 2. And if it's a slope, we always put, make it into a fraction. Remember, this is rise over run. And then we're going to do our B. Our B is the number without a variable. So our Y-intercept is 4. So we're going to graph this. We put a point, we do our B first, so we go to 4 on the y axis. 1, 2, 3, 4. And our rise is minus 2, so we start here. We go down 2, and our run is 1. So look at that, it ends up being right there. Let me make that red. Look at that. Our second point lands right on that first line. And then we're going to connect our line. Our line. So where the lines intersect, that's the solution for x and y in both of these equations. So it intersected right here. So that point is x is 1, and our y would be 2. You can check.
check to make sure that you got the right value by putting them back into the equation. So this is your x, this is your y, and if I substitute them back in, I get y equals, which would be 2 equals 1 plus 1. So that works. We can put it in both of them just to be sure. 2 would be your y equals negative 2 times 1 would be negative 2, plus 4 would be 2. So we have 2 equals 2. So this works. So the solution to this system of equations is 1, 2. Now the negative thing about doing it this method is see how nicely this intersected right where the grid lines cross? That doesn't always happen. Like if your lines would intersect like this, it would be really hard to tell what that point is exactly. That's why this isn't the best method, but it's, it's showing you what's actually happening. Let's go down to example three. We'll graph this one in green. So the first one is y equals two. So we go to our y-axis. We're going to go up to two, one, two, and we're going to draw a line straight across to two. Remember this? There we go. And here, this one's a little bit trickier. y equals x. Well, we can get our m, which is what? It's the number in front of your x. This looks tricky. It's like it's not like the other one, but it is. So m would be 1 over 1. And our b, well, there's no b. It would be plus 0. So our y-intercept is 0. So we start at, whoops, I did that in red instead of green, darn. Oh, I should have the next one red. So we start, our y-intercept is 0, so let's put point on 0, and we're going to go up 1 and over 1, it's not quite as clear cut as this, and we're going to get our line, I'm going to draw my line in red again, and where they intersect, that's our solution. All the ones in this lesson should intersect on a grid line. So how do I make this intersect on a grid line? Uh, there we go. Close enough. Um, use a roller and grafting paper. I'm getting too big of dots, so mine's not quite as accurate as it should be. So I'm thinking the place where they intersect is right here. And that would be 1, 2. So we would get 2. We know y has to be 2. All the y's are 2. But our x would be 2 and our y would be 2. And look, they both have to be the same because we have y equals x. So they made that easy for us. Let's try the next one. This one is solved by graphing. So we're going to find our m for the first one. m is 1. And our b is 2. And then for our second one, our slope is 1. Remember, it's 1 over 1. 1 over 1 and our y-intercept is negative 1. So both slopes are 1. So what are you thinking here? They're both going to slant the same amount. So let's try graph of them just to show you something. So first one, b is 2. So I'm going to go put a point on 2. Here we'll share this point. And our slope is up 1 over 1. There we go. And I'll connect those with a line. There we go. There's our line. Then let's do our next one. This one is B is negative 1 this time. So we go to negative 1. It's getting messy, isn't it? And our slope, whoops, that didn't work. So we go to negative 1. I'm going to put our point for B. Our slope is 1 over 1, so we're going up 1 and over 1. Look what's happening. This is not good. I'm going to connect those points. Look at our lines. Do they look like they're ever going to intersect at any point? Well, the answer is no. These two lines are never going to intersect because their slope is the same. So just by looking at these two equations, I can say, wow, their slopes are the same. They're never going to intersect. So there's no solution to this. 
So what you would write for this, since they don't intersect, you could either write no solution, or the more technical term is inconsistent. If there is a solution, what we write like these two, these two have a solution right here and right here, so these two would be consistent. So inconsistent, if the slopes are the same, they're never going to intersect, so there's no solution to these. There's no x and y values that will make both of these true. Let's look at a couple more. This is a fairly big lesson. Okay, now we're going over here. I have example four here. This one says solve by graphing. This is yet another type. So look at these, and let's solve them. We have to solve these for y. They're not in the right. They're not in our form y equals mx plus b. So I'm going to solve this for y. Y equals x plus two. And let's solve this one for y. I'm going to divide everything by 2. How about that first? So we get y minus x equals 2. So if I bring this over, we get y equals x plus 2. If you notice anything between these two equations, y equals x plus 2, y equals x plus 2. They're the same equation. So if I graph these, I'm going to put a point on 2. And my slope is 1, up 1, over 1. So if I graph that to the line between those two. If I graph this one, and if I graph this one, they're the same line. So every point on this line is true for this line. These are the same equation. See, once we divided it by 2, they're the same equation, but in different form. If that is the case, you would write that these equations, these equations, this system right here, is called dependent. Dependent. And you can see down here, dependent equations, which are equivalent equations, are the same equation in two different forms. Let's see this last one before we go through all these definitions. Do these equations have a common solution? Now we don't have to graph every one to know whether they're consistent, inconsistent, or dependent. Actually, you don't have to graph them at all. You can just look at them. So if I look at these two, what do you notice about these two equations? What do you notice about their slopes? Both of their slopes are 1. If the slopes are the same, they're going to be parallel lines. So they won't have a common solution, we would write that these are inconsistent. So finally, let's just review some of the terminology here. Consistent equations are equations that have a single ordered pair as a common solution. So consistent equations intersect. That's the main thing is remember that. Inconsistent equations are equations that have no common solution. The graphs of inconsistent equations are parallel lines, as we did in example 3. And finally, there's dependent equations, which are equivalent equations, like example 4. They're the same equations, they just have multiple. So we could have looked at this one when we this one when we saw y minus x equals 2 and 2y minus 2x equals 4. You can see that this one has, is just multiple of this one. So we could say right away that they're dependent. So hopefully that all made sense to you. I, as I said before, I can't see you or judge by what your facial expressions, whether you get it. So, so hopefully you didn't get it. I'll be answering more help questions tomorrow. So that's it for lesson 81.